Well, I thought I said record. Okay, we're recording now. Oh, sweet. Okay. Huh. That's really weird. So what I wanted to demonstrate out today was, again, is to go over some of the things that Ringgate had, was talking about and obviously start creating some exercises for the rolling tutorials. So, and actually, so here's my agenda right here on the screen. That's some of the things I wanted to uh, touch up on. And here was something that I thought was really interesting was when I started to go over pretty exercises for persistent sins. Now, out of curiosity, have anyone actually tried to do a persistent sin on a node? Uh, yes, I have. And I, I was like, what? And it locked, so it, it, locked it up and we had to restart. Uh, let's see, we had to restart our, I guess we had to restart the node, yeah. Yeah, uh, as regarding uh, persistent sins, I haven't really seen um, a use case or a use for persistent sin. Like in in practice, what what can you use persistent sin to achieve? So, you you use a persistent sin. I can totally see that. Like actually, the best use case was in regards to, for instance, a. I just say you had an SOS beacon, right? But you wanted to keep sending persistent sins without necessarily clog clogging up the network. So here, I'll show you actually on here. Give me one second. I'll show you. So, do, 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 do. I have some open. All right, so can everyone see my screen all right? Yeah. So I'm just going to run this in standalone because last thing I want to do is get the out after crashing the <laughs> the um the bootstrap nodes. So again, like it really does a good job of broadcasting out signals. So for for instance, I'll give you I'll show you what, what it looks like because when you're running this like a persistent send on uh like on our node or archain.icloud or archain.cloud or even in crypto effects, you don't necessarily get a a good variable. Actually, let me, I've got to do it this way. Give me one second. Open up. Give me one second, sorry. Here we go. All right, so I'm just going to generate the wallets. All right, so what I'm about to start doing is deploying the SIN. We'll see what exactly will look like on the R node side. Success. R node. What are you deploying? Does it have? Uh, a persistent send in it yes it does and i'll show you the it's essentially here i'll show you the syntax and that's what happens <laughs> and it just keeps sending yeah so um yeah what i was what i'm trying to understand is um what is what is the use case for a persistent send, because now if you want to continue to receive a data, you could use a persistent receive and then make a send for each time you want the data to be received. But for a persistent send, I've never really seen or um, 
understood a use case for it just yet? I think for the use case is, hmm, in terms of real world applications, I can see where you will want to do this then. And actually from Josh's tutorial, one of the best examples would be, for instance, you want to keep broadcasting out information to, for instance, I believe Josh, you said, um, airplane pilot. So Yeah, but you could use a persistent receive to do that. Then yeah, you, you, keep you, in mind, it's the same as a smart contract, right? So in terms of sending, it, it all depends on what you're looking for. I can't really necessarily think of what you need a persistent send for off the top of my head. Gary, do you have any ideas? Yeah. Uh, okay, hold on here. Let me see. How can I? Sorry, I like to turn on my video when when I talk because uh, I I like I, I really like others to turn on their videos when they talk because it helps me understand who's talking and and so on and so forth. But what I was going to say about persistent sins. Uh, uh, yes, I think I think there are good use cases for it, David. And, and but I'm saying that based on what I've seen in other languages. But I think Jeremy's got a good idea here with this SOS a beacon. Now, when when it prints out, could we go back and look at the code because I find this very interesting. Is that all it is? So and this, like, for instance, this would be a perfect use case to where I'm, not, I want, I'm curious to know the benchmark test, like if you wanted to do persistent sense on, like, for instance, Ethereum of would it clog up network resources or things of that nature. But this is like a perfect example of just constantly sending. And let's just say you have a smart contract on the receiving end. Let's just say on a cruise ship that's flying by, they might have a contract or a program in their system that says, hey, in case of emergency, if any signals get to here, we would like to know so we can receive that SOS right. through the SOS channel that we defined here. So that will be, to me, a perfect use case of why you would need to do a persistent thing but, in like reality. Yes, uh, but the, the fact that it was sort of uh, spilling down the screen there, that implied you're actually doing a persistent read somewhere to actually look at this thing that many times, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And that's where, like, if we want, we can make a, a contract or a persistent read to where we can say, hey, contract cruise ship for messages on SOS channel. So, I mean, if you want, we can try to create a contract that can allow us to hear on it. Well, uh, what I was saying was, why do we have to match up a persistent send with a persistent read? Why don't we just use single reads when we need to look at the persistent send? Only because, like, so once you do a that, one time read, oh, sorry, David, what? Okay, that, that was why I brought up the, um, the question or the, the discussion on what's the use case for persistent sense because if you were to do it the way you're you're saying gary that you have persistent sense and then one persistent receive um one um uh, receive rather a yes. single receive yeah. it, it's, it's it's much better to have a persistent receive and one send so you get to send each time you want to send to someone or you want to send the data to another channel or another person you get to send on those previous um on that persistent receive that you've already deployed to the contract or to the node rather than having getting to receive it each time but i, I just prefer using persistent receive as much better than um well, persistent send maybe because i've never really seen yeah well it, it comes down to automating it right what if you don't so imagine you have to walk across the island and hit send whenever you think a cruise ship is coming, right? What if you just wanted this program to where it just keeps sending so you could go back on the other side of the island 
and like connect coconuts or make a tiki house or whatever. So that's where it will come in handy. It's where you don't have to keep manually sending out requests, especially if you know that it's specific to that um, ad or contract or to that channel. So it, it's almost like you're automating out what you're trying to do, essentially. So again, if it comes down to you having to walk all the way across the island, just to hit a send button for the chance of a cruise ship might be coming down, it's not as productive. On opposed to just broadcasting it out until someone hears it. Yeah, and, and, and I ag I agree. I'd like this idea of a persistent send as sort of a service. Now, I, I, David, I'm not going to say uh, that I disagree with what you're saying, but I, I need to do a little more research into some other uh, programming uh constructs that i've seen in in other languages and i think uh closure is the one i need to go look at to to find uh a really good use for this and 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 not that jeremy i don't think yours is a good use i, I think it's a good but but i i think there is a much more uh uh let's see what am i trying to say a much more general way we can look at this idea of persistent sins as a service uh that that will become quite attractive to us but but that's i guess that's all i want to say about it right now all right then we could definitely um look into that because yeah that'd be great if we can as you just said specifically identify where in programming this would be relevant so just like sending it once that's something maybe for Joshi's office hours so we can bring that up to him for that. I was just only was able to think about like a real life use case of where that can where that can happen. Well, I think th I think there is, and I think it's related to a function that I've seen in other languages that it took me the longest time to understand what they were doing, and it had to do with um, sequences. Okay, but I need to go back and brush up on my closure programming. Closure uh, was one of the last language I looked at before I looked at Rolang, and and uh, I do see similarities because mm -hmm. they because they both uh, take very modern uh, very modern approaches to compiler design, and they both solve similar problems, but in in uh, you know radically different ways. And I, and I guess that's true with all programming language. They they all solve the same problems. Mm -hmm. And you said the language was called closure. Yeah, closure, but it's spelled C L O J U R E. And and you know the 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 play is with the J there. Is closure uh, is runs on the J V M. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but yeah. but anyway, that's that's about all I remember from from the name of it. But it, they, uh, closure is really big on um, uh, not modifying memory. You know, mute, they don't like muta mutating memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And as we we're talking about um, persistent sins and like how we can receive, the next one is always like listening for the constant so as you can see we created a new channel called show num and actually gary maybe you can answer this so when you write so when we write print or um uh standard out when we put the parentheses beside it just to confirm we are actually binding this um i believe it was what a uri to yeah. the print so yeah so we're binding it to this because I was like kind of messing around with this before where it's like, so it could be print, um, show, doesn't yeah. really matter as long as this bind, this is bind to some name or variable, then it doesn't really matter. Yes, I, I think you're, you're correct with that. These, these special processes that, that have these tick markers around them, uh, you know, have, have real special, you know, they have special rules about how they have to be treated because 
this is the way our programs uh, talk to the outside world. Mm hmm All right. So, all right, yeah, cool. So back to, so print, we binded print to the row dot, uh, colon IO dot standard out. Now we're gonna start listening. So you always start off with the form and we're specifying all numbers, which is the message that we want to show. Now, I put a question mark here because we already know that this is single. And actually, the best way I was able to memorize how to do persistent listenings is you have one dash to show like a singular term, and you can or you can have the equal sign to show multiple or double. So that always helps me remember whether or not I want to listen fully or just only once. Yes. So by us doing this, and we actually discovered this out as well, is when we run this, so it's listening to anything that's been broadcasted on the show num channel. But the thing is, when you only listen once, yes, it stays in storage, but it comes down to the point that whatever gets to the channel first is what's going to be displayed. So, but we don't really want that. So we want to listen to all the numbers that comes in. So when we run this, let's see what happens. Oops. We now see all the numbers displayed. Oh, wow. And actually in the correct chronological order. Mm -hmm. And so as I was like, kind of, as I was like thinking about this, I was really thinking, I was like, all right, well, what if, Hypothetically speaking, we want to separate this out because as we notice that all these numbers are grouped into this one message, which is all num. Now, what if all these numbers are different people's bank accounts, right? Like this number has, this one bank account that has $11 in it. This one has eight. So David, how do you think we can go about and this is now, now we're about to start getting into bundling in a little bit, right? So David, how do you think we can go about specifying or uniquely identifying each bank and be able to link it to their own um, variable or their own um, channel and then be able to print it all out at once? Okay. Um... Can you go over that again, please? But oh, wait, sorry. what I can see now is we have an unforgeable name, shown num. Yep. So what I want to that's do different is, from that's different from what we're receiving on because this is a free name um, on line thirteen. Mm -hmm. It's a free name, so that's different from the uh, eleven. So. What you're asking is we want each of them to be received differently, right? Correct. So actually, let me take a step back here. So, oh, wow, I totally didn't like think about it like that for the next um, step. So you're right. So it is a free name. So how do you think we could on this one channel, how can we individualize each account under the show num channel to where we can print out like all individually instead of all grouped up into all num? Okay, so what if we receive different messages rather than receiving just all num? Maybe we could receive all num one, all num two, and all num three. Yep, we can do that. So let's um, scroll down here. All right, so if you look at the bottom here, so notice how I'm listening on so I'm creating essentially a free 
our, our free our free name, right? Because even though we're under the show gnome, we've created it's like a another channel inside that. Is this what you're referring to, David? Yes. And so you're you're saying, let's see here, show gnome. And this is where we get down to bundling, right? So we have the semicolon, which essentially stands for bundling. So that means we're going to group different things under one. So let's go to this. Let's do X, Y. We're only going to listen to it once. So num two. Then we're gonna bundle Z into so num three. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. One, two, three. Now here's actually a curious a curious discussion topic. So why doesn't it really matter? So we already created a unforgeable name up here called show none. And but in this channel, we are we declared three new channels under this one channel. So why is it so let's see what first let's see what happens when we run it, right? Oh, cool. So it displayed it. So why did it allow us to run show num one, two, and three, even though it's all under this unportable name show num? Okay, I, I don't think the unforgeable name has any relationship to do with uh, the show num one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. I think um, Rolang sees them as different things. So. Correct. So essentially, we just already proved that it doesn't necessarily matter. How can I word this? So even though we already made an unfortunate name and that anything inside this can communicate, right? So we've already established that. And so this is actually what I was kind of stumped on when I was creating this up. I was like, all right, so we can create rename channels inside of an unforgeable name channel. So I thought that was like a cool nifty thing to learn inside of that. Let's see. Are we doing one more time? Because I saw the 10 minute mark. Yes, we have eight minutes and uh, seven seconds left. All right, cool. Let me um, so share my screen here. So is there any, for what we already just went over for now, is there any questions or comments? <coughs> All right, cool. It looks good to me, yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah, I'm trying to find my other exercises I already made for this, but I seem, so I can't seem to, Find it. So I'm just going to actually just call it now. So on a side note, are you guys down to doing for doing a Genesis ceremony? David, yeah, that'll be fine you? by me. Yeah, that'll be fine by me. I I, I'm, I don't know that I'm fine or, or not with it. I would just have to be an observer. Yeah, but there's an issue. I, can that happen with just one required SIG? Yes, it can. Oh, okay. As long as you specify it and everyone has, or the other person signs it, has to issue or say, hey, you, can, you only have to have one SIG. So, 
Awesome. Let's do that. And um, oh, hey, Isaac. What's <laughs> up? Nice. You want to partake in the Genesis here, Marty? Uh, I, th I think I'm in Gary's position as well. I'd probably just have to be an observer. I, I don't have Rnode or anything installed on my computer. Gotcha. All right, cool. So let's um, close out of this. Hey, Gary, do you want to open up the Zoom room and start recording and observing? Or you want me to just up, reopen mine back up? Uh, hold is on. it going to be a different room? Uh, I've got a phone call coming in. What are you about to say, David? Hello. I said, is it going to be a different room? Um, we can hear. Let's just like use this room again. So I'm just going to close out and uh, we can all come back in it. All right. Sounds good. Sweet. See you guys soon.